I started to tell him about the allegation was that he had been involved with prostitutes in a hotel in Moscow in 2013 during a visit for the Miss Universe pageant and that the Russians had uh, filmed the episode and he interrupted very defensively and started talking about it, you know, do I look like a guy who needs hookers? And I assumed he was asking that rhetorically. I didn't answer that. And I just moved on and, and explained, sir, I'm not saying that we credit this, I'm not saying we believe it. We just thought it very important that you know. James Comey talking about the new book and the dossier. He also says Trump raised the issue more than once. He says he may want me to investigate it to prove that it didn't happen. And then he says, uh, something that distracted me because he said, you know, if there's even a 1% chance my wife thinks that's true, that's terrible. And I, and I remember thinking, how could your wife think there's a 1% chance you were with prostitutes peeing on each other in Moscow? I honestly never thought these words would come out of my mouth, but I don't know whether the, the current president of the United States was with prostitutes peeing on each other in Moscow in 2013. It's possible, but I don't know. Well, then, I'm joined by some friends of the beat, Christina Greer, Nicholas Kristoff, and Ambassador McFall. Christina, there's a saying, reporting live from the gutter, uh, James Comey saw a lot of important things. What do you think about him speaking so bluntly about something that is probably not as important and is in the gutter? So I think his detractors will say he's got a book to sell, and he's possibly using hyperbole, and this just further discredits him. For some people, you know, Trump is like tar, right? Any interaction with him, you, you somehow get pulled down um, to his level. He does, he does not rise to the occasion, as we've seen. Comey, though, is an interesting character in that, you know, so many Democrats remember him releasing certain things about Hillary Clinton uh, before the election. Mm -hmm. uh, now we know that he had information on Trump and did not do that. And so he's unfortunately not the most credible uh, storyteller right now. Uh, and it's frustrating because there are so many things about the Russia scandals, the possible. A lot of other things. A lot of Let other things. Let me play things. also, Nick. Here is James Comey again talking about the discussion about the tape and whether to investigate um, whether there was any kind of tape. And I said to him, sir, when he started talking about it, I may order you to investigate that. I said, sir, that's up to you, but you'd want to be careful about that because it might create a narrative that we're investigating you personally. And second, it's very difficult to prove something didn't happen. You know, I guess I would make the point that, um, I mean, it is incredible that we're having this conversation about half the time about golden showers and half the time about a second federal criminal investigation of the president. But, but I do think that fundamentally this isn't about uh, golden showers, but about a president who is trying to use the law enforcement apparatus to get a pass to impress his wife. And his you know, third wife. His <laughs> third wife. So you're saying one uh, way so, to think of 2018 is this is not about golden showers. Yeah, I mean, that obviously we were titillated by the fact that that is the content of this. But f the larger constitutional issue, the issue of abuse of power, the issue of obstruction, has to do with the president. Who, I mean, any president is going to try to do things for their family, maybe arrange a trip to the National Gallery. But here we have a president who, according to testimony of the FBI chief at the time, is instead trying to use. America's FBI to tomato, investigate tomato, something. Tomato, tomato, National yeah. Gallery. But, I mean, <laughs> this is, but this is the same president who's using the presidential seal to, you know, sell trinkets so that he can further enrich himself and his family. This is someone who has refused to rise to the occasion of the presidency of the United States. So he sees the FBI yeah. and the CIA as in entities that work for him because he fundamentally never sees himself as someone who works for the, the American people, and you're, which is the right. definition of the U.S. presidency. You're putting uh, the context here that links both of your points, right. which is this is not your personal FBI, yeah. and right. that, that original sin is hanging over everything. Ambassador, I have news for you. I'm going to ask you about a different topic. Okay. <laughs> Let me play for you James Comey discussing another important policy part, which is what he viewed as Donald Trump's complete and total lack of interest in standing up to a national security crisis in Russia. You also said you were struck by what they didn't ask. Very much. No one, to my recollection, asked, so what 
What's coming next from the Russians? How might we stop it? What's the future look like? It was all, what can we say about what they did and how it affects the election that we just had? Ambassador? Well, very consistent, right? Uh, the president has never been that interested in this topic. He needs to keep the denying it because he thinks it undermines his legitimacy. Uh, and we have suffered in terms of our national security as a result. We have not taken elementary measures to protect ourselves uh, in future elections, nor have we taken, in my opinion, elementary me measures to protect us uh, from disinformation in our elections. And I want to underscore that to get back to your earlier conversation, uh, because because I do know the Russians pretty well, and, and two things I know well. One is they can record anything that happens in their country, most certainly at the Ritz-Carlton. But number two, they're also incredibly adept at using disinformation in all kinds of strange ways. And we need to uh, weigh both of those things as we think about that first story. And but to the that second point, one, Ambassador, gotta... to that point, though, I want to pin you on this. Is James Comey, as a former federal official, out here over his skis saying things that might help their disinformation about a thing that's not true, that has been verified. I, I thought he was pretty careful. I didn't, I haven't heard the whole interview. I that just was, heard what you played right now. Those clips were careful? That's basically it. Well, he did not say that we know that this tape exists. Uh, it was alleged. Um, he fanned uh, it. He fanned it. And he's coming from a very sacred place as being, as being involved in the investigation. Well, I, I, again, he's reporting on something that is common knowledge. We've been talking about it for a long time now. Whether he should or not, that's an ethical question, given his previous job. I take your point there. Mm -hmm. But what we do not, you know, I can think of all kinds of reasons why Russian government officials, including ones that might have spoken to private investigators, might want this story to be being discussed right now, just as we're doing right now. I, I don't know the answer. I want to be clear. I I'm speculating, but I can I can I can come up with that hypothesis, yeah. and I've seen that kind of disinformation smear campaign against other and that's, U.S. government right. officials, including myself, by the way. Of course, and that's the important part. And I'm going to have more on this next week. Uh, James Comey uh, is an honest person, according to the record, but he's making some choices here that, that bear more scrutiny. Uh, Ambassador McFall, Christina Greer, Nick Kristoff, I'll see you in fallback. Stay with me. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the video videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.